Okay. Whenever you guys do your FRQs, make sure you structure them how they're written out like this. So it says number one, then you'd go one and then put A. So it's just easier for the grader or the reader to, to check these. So it says, assume that the United States economy is currently in equilibrium at the full employment level of real GDP. Draw a correctly labeled graph, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, showing each of the following in the United States, output level and price level. So this is one of the three economies that you'd set up, recession, full employment, or inflation. This one is at full employment. So we start with our long run supply at full employment. This is labeled as real GDP. This is our price level. So you're going to have short run, aggregate supply, and aggregate demand crossing at long run supply. So that shows full employment. And out, I'm sorry, output level and price level. I got both of those. So whenever it doesn't tell you to label it PY or Y0 or whatever, just stick with price or Y, F, and you'll be fine. If they say specifically, um, then label it however they tell you. Um, all right, so now it says Japan is a major importer of United States products. Assume that the Japanese economy goes into a recession. So if Japan is the importer, the U.S. is the exporter, aren't they? So I try to label my, or think about stuff. You know, let me zoom in a little bit. Try to think about things that way. So Japan is an importer of United States products. That means we're the exporters. So immediately start thinking X minus M from Sig X. So it says explain the impact of the Japanese recession on the United States equilibrium output and price levels. Output, remember is GDP, price level is going to be inflation or the level of prices right here on the aggregate supply and demand. Um, so you get a point for your correctly labeled graph, you get a point showing equilibrium at full employment, and you get a point for correctly labeled price and output levels. So just drawing this graph correctly is worth three points according to College Board. Okay, so what are exports going to do if Japan is in a recession and they normally buy our stuff? Our exports are going to decrease, aren't they? Because people in Japan aren't going to buy as much of our stuff. So first thing it says is explain the impact of the Japanese recession on the US equilibrium. So if it says explain, it didn't say to draw anything yet, did it? So if I'm just explaining, I'm going to say on B and then I, so I have B and I, I'm going to say U.S. exports will decrease. Okay, so that's as simple as that one can be right there. Now the second part, they say show these effects on your graph in part A. So how do I show exports falling? So remember I have my X minus M, so that's part of sig X, right? So if our exports are falling, Exports are part of aggregate demand. Okay, you would want to think it's supply, but it's not because it's part of SIG X. So aggregate demand is going to decrease. I'll shift it to the left. Then I'm going to have a new level of output. So wherever so short run supply crosses the new aggregate demand, so we have the same amount of stuff, and now less of it is wanted by the people in Japan. So that's going to make our price level drop and our output drop. So you need these arrows showing price level dropping, GDP levels dropping, and um, you'll get a point for showing the decrease, you'll get a short, uh, point for showing equilibrium output and price levels changing. Okay, so these graphs will tell you the story or the answers. All right, so that's part A and part B. Now for part C, assume that the Federal Reserve takes action to curb the effects of the Japanese recession on the United States economy. So now I have part C. And it's going to have three parts, I, 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 and I, 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 Captain. So, so the Federal Reserve needs to do something. That Japan not buying our stuff put us into a recession, didn't it? <coughs> so if it puts us into a recession, we're going to need monetary policy. So monetary policy can be expansionary or contractionary, just like fiscal policy. So the target, basically what monetary policy wants to do is change interest rates or influence interest rates to where people will borrow and stimulate the economy. So the tools are buy bonds, sell bonds, reserve ratio, discount rate, and Fed funds rate. But this one tells you exactly what open market operation would the Federal Reserve undertake. So op open market operation means they want to buy bonds. 
That's right, buy bonds equals big bucks. Now, I'm writing that on there, you know, to help remind that wouldn't be your actual answer. You could say buy bonds or purchase bonds is fine. Okay, so that's right. Now they want us to draw, so we're going to buy bonds and make big bucks. That means the money supply is going to go up. So big bucks means bigger money supply. Use a correctly labeled graph of the money market to show how the Federal Reserve policy action will affect the nominal interest rate. So they want us to draw. We have a vertical money supply because the Federal Reserve is in charge of it. They have a monopoly over it. So we have our quantity, we have our money. And remember a lowercase i with a percent is um, the nominal interest rate. So we have money supply and then money demand, which is either asset or transaction demand whenever people need money to do those things. So the level where these two cross, remember everything is a supply and demand graph, just with different labels. So the money supply, how much is in circulation, and money demand, how much people need transactions and asset, or to put money into assets. So we know money supply is going to go up from what we solved up here. Money supply going up. So anytime we increase, that means we shift to the right. So we shift that to the right. We have our new money supply. We have our new amount of money. That says M1. Sorry, I'm using a Sharpie. It's a little blended together. What's that thing right next to M1? Uh, that's a Q for quantity. So uh, yeah, anytime you have something on the horizontal axis, it's going to be some type of quantity of GDP or whatever. Um, all right, so now we have our correctly labeled graph. And on College Board's answer key, they label it MS0, MS1. None of that stuff matters if it doesn't tell you to do it. So just label it however you feel comfortable doing it. Um, so now we have our correctly labeled graph. Um, now they want us to, so this is part two, our graph. And part three is going to be explain how the change in the nominal interest rate in part C will affect aggregate demand, price level, and real output in the United States. So we solved up here the interest rates decreased. And what that's going to lead to is investment going up. Remember, people like to borrow money at low interest rates. So at that low interest rate, they're going to borrow, and I is part of Sig X. So therefore, if Sig X is going up on one side, aggregate demand is going to go up on the other side. Now they asked, what happens to aggregate demand? What happens to price level? What happens to real output? So if aggregate demand goes up, remember that causes some inflation because people are wanting it. There's a set amount available. Oh, sorry. Now price level is going to go up. And what's going to happen to our real output? If aggregate demand goes up, then GDP is going to go up, which is actually real output as well. So I can explain things just with my arrows and my symbols. We've got aggregate demand is increasing, price levels going up, real output is going up. Okay, so monetary policy can get us out of that recession. Now, part D says define the real interest rate, and what the real interest rate is. Remember our formula: real interest rate equals I nominal interest rate minus pi. So the real interest rate. is nominal minus inflation. Nominal interest adjusted for inflation. Now, let's see, how do they define it in College Board? Okay, so in Part D, we find how College Board wants it written exactly. Here's how they define it. One point is earned for stating that the real interest rate is the nominal rate minus inflation, or expected inflation, or that the real interest rate is nominal adjusted for inflation. So they give you a couple ways to explain it. So if you said one of those, then you'll be good. Um, now we're down to part E. Indicate the effect of the open market operation you identified in part C on the real interest rate in the United States. So in part C, when we found what the money supply does, if you just look at this formula, I know that the nominal interest rate is dropping. So you'll get one point for indicating the real interest rate is going to fall because the nominal interest rate falls and price level increases. So if we plug in our formula, real interest equals nominal minus inflation. And I know that this decreased. 
Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Let me do that so you can actually see what I'm doing. So if that's going to decrease, what's going to happen to that one? It's going to decrease as well. So the real interest rate is going to decrease. Now, does it say explain? No, it says it just says indicate. So all you have to say is real interest rate is going to drop. In the question, if it says explain, then you have to go a little further. But this one just says indicate the effect of the open market operation you identified in Part C on the real interest rate in the United States. So you don't have to explain. Now, that was a lot. This is if any time you see question number one, this is considered the long question it has a lot of parts and pieces. Um, and then you'd have a question two or three like these that are a little bit shorter. Okay, so that is all of that one.